Hi, this is the first of a series of presentations on interpolation. We'll start with linear interpolation known as lerping for short, as one of the simplest examples. Uh, it's taken from section 5.1.1 in the textbook. The PDF is online. So for linear interpolation or lerping, we're given two distinct points, x and y, uh, x not equal to y, in some n-dimensional space Rn, where n can be greater than or equal to 1. Even the case of n equals 1 is interesting. And we think of the line through these two points. Let L be the line containing these two points. So here's x, here's y, here's the line containing them. And we want to define a function x of alpha with alpha ranging over the reals. Alpha is a scalar. And we want to have x of 0 equal to x, x of 1 equal to y. And we want for other variables of alpha to smoothly interpolate or extrapolate from x and y. So the formula for this is easy to derive. x of alpha is x, that's our point at one end of the line segment, plus alpha times y minus x. And what's going on here, when alpha is 0, we start off at x. When alpha is 1, we're at y. As alpha varies, we move at a steady rate from x to y. If alpha goes negative, we move at a steady rate this way, positive, steady rate past y. So here, for instance, would be x of 1 half. Here would be x of one-third. Here would be approximately x of two. This distance is supposed to be the same as the earlier distance. Draw that a little more to scale. And x of minus one, we go this distance back this way. And here would be x of minus one, etc. We can rewrite this formula as 1 minus alpha times x plus alpha times y, just by regrouping. And this is often known as lerping, lerp of x, y, alpha is equal to 1 minus alpha times x plus alpha times y, just by definition. And lerping stands for linear interpolation. L for linear and burp from the middle of interpolation. I'm not quite sure why it's not called linting for linear interpolation, but it's linear interpolation. Lerping is the standard terminology for this. Uh, I call it linear interpolation, but we can also think of it as linear extrapolation. Because extrapolation would be the case where alpha is less than zero or alpha is greater than 1, you think of extrapolating out between x and y, out from between x and y. Extrapolation. Good. So on the next board, I'll talk about how to invert linear interpolation. This is all very simple. We want to also be able to go from a value on the line, a point on the line, back to the alpha value. So to invert the operation of linear interpolation, we're given the two points x and y. And of course, that defines a line. And we're given another point u on the line l. And the goal is to find an alpha in the reals, a scalar, such that u is equal to lerp x, y, alpha. So let's try deriving this. We know that u equals x plus 
alpha times y minus x. So therefore, u minus x equals alpha times y minus x. And it's tempting to try to divide by y minus x now and say alpha is equal to the ratio of this over this, but we can't divide by vector, so that doesn't work. But we need to find some way to divide by a scalar, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the dot product on both sides with y minus x. And now we get that u minus x dot product y minus x equals alpha times y minus x dot product with itself. Okay, now y minus x dot product with itself is actually the, the magnitude of y minus x squared. And sometimes that might even get written in the notation just y minus x squared, where it's understood in this notation, a bit of a shorthand notation, that squaring means take the dot product. So the dot product with a vector with itself is the length of the vector squared. y minus x, y and x are different points, so y minus x is non-zero. So we can divide by the magnitude of this. So then alpha equals u minus x dot y minus x divided by y minus x dot y minus x, or the same as u minus x dot y minus x over the magnitude of y minus x squared. So this gives us a way to invert linear interpolation for a point u on the line. So what if u is not on the line? What happens then? So suppose u is off the line somewhere. Then what happens, uh, we solve for alpha as equal to u minus x dot y minus x over the magnitude of y minus x squared. Okay, so what do we get? And get what? Question mark. Well, we're taking, this should have been a dot product here, we're taking the vector u minus x, which is here in red, and we're dot producting with the vector y minus x, which is there in red, and that's the same as if we took the, the projection of u minus x onto the line L and took its dot product. So what we get, we get the alpha, the value alpha, such that if you take v equals lerp of x, y, alpha, then v is the closest point on the line to u. In other words, you've dropped a perpendicular here, and here's our point V. So, two things that this means. First of all, it means that um, we have a good meaning for this, even when U is off the line. But in particular, it gives, so first of all, it means that we get a method to find the closest point. on L to U, which is fine, although we not hard to get methods for that. But may, maybe the more important point here is that it means that the computation of alpha is robust. In the sense, what I mean by robust is if you have, say, slight perturbations of U or round off errors in the computation of U so that U, in general, Maybe u is just about on a line. Maybe u is extremely close, close to line due to round off errors. You wouldn't want to have round off errors magnify further errors. 
the point here is that because the computation of alpha gives you the alpha for the closest point on line to you, that a small pertur perturbation of you uh, doesn't affect the result very much. So the computation is, is robust under round off errors in U. It still gives a reasonably good answer, in other words, back toward the best possible answer. And that's everything I had to say in this presentation about linear interpolation. So thank you very much.